Hello, I am Dr. Rakesh Jalali. I am the medical director of the Apollo Proton Cancer Center. Proton therapy, this was the first site in Southeast Asia and India and Middle East. Now, proton therapy is the sophisticated form of radiation therapy and has this remarkable ability to deliver extremely precise doses to the tumor and sparing significant amount of normal tissue. Proton therapy also is particularly indicated in young people because the cure rates are very high, but also we have to ensure their survivorship and their quality of cure is extremely good for the rest of their lives. Traditionally, pediatric cancers constitute about 2 to 3 percent of our cancer population. But I'm glad to say that among 1300 to 1400 odd patients that we have treated with proton therapy in the last five years at the Apollo Proton Cancer Center, as many as 24 percent belong to the pediatric and young adult population. Now in pediatric population, you can understand that there is a little bit of intimidation. They are in a new environment. The parents are a little bit anxious. So it is absolutely important to have that environment and the workspace and the treatment space in a very patient friendly, in a child friendly manner. A percentage of the patients uh, among this pediatric population belong to extremely low age. Now, proton therapy also gives us great opportunity to treat patients even less than three years of the age, which used to be the standard for uh, avoiding radiation. We generally did not give radiation less than three years. But our youngest child that we have treated in our center is nine to 10 month old, and about 100 odd children, which is about 10% of our patient population, have undergone sedation on a daily basis for getting the proton therapy, such that that should not be the determinant that not giving uh, proton therapy for this vulnerable young children population who are otherwise great candidates for getting this therapy. I must also tell you that there are many centers in the world who still or who are hesitant to institute proton therapy in this very young population because the systems are not in place to have the anesthesia equipment, the sedation, the procedures, to give a very seamless and effective sedation for these patient populations. Right from the beginning, we are absolutely delighted that it was very much in our mind and all of us put extra effort such that we have a dedicated pediatric anesthesiologist, we have a dedicated pediatric anesthesiology team along with the nursing staff, along with the technical staff and we also put the necessary infrastructure and equipment in place that right from the start we have been able to dedicate ourselves to this very important space for very young people that who undergo sedation. Then naturally, as you can understand, uh, we have to have the SOPs and we realized that there were hardly any SOPs uh, in the world. So very carefully, especially with tremendous support from Dr. Indumati, Dr. Anand Murugesh and all the anesthesia team, our physics team, our radiation oncology team and the radiation therapist team, of course, we were able to mount this program, which is extremely successful. And I'm absolutely delighted to tell you that we have done more than 2,000 sedations in the last few years. And through the medium of this Apollo Pro News, we would like to communicate to you the success story of the pediatric sedation and proton therapy at Apollo Proton Cancer Center in Chennai, India. Namaste. The goal of pediatric sedation is to ensure immobility. That means during the procedure, during the procedure of radiation therapy, the child should be relatively immobile. The anesthesia procedure itself should be short. The recovery from the anesthesia should be relatively quick. The procedure of sedation should be relatively painless. It should not interfere after, once the child recovers, that it should not interfere with the activities such as uh, eating, drinking, and playing, and it should maintain the airway patent uh, in various body positions. So these are the primarily the goals of pediatric sedation from the perspective of a radiation oncologist. Now, there are many studies which have shown that pediatric sedation when used on a temporary basis, both for short-term and long-term basis, the safety has been established uh, across a number of studies from various institutions. In fact, there have been few studies on identical twins, one among which uh, who has received 
a sedation and the other twin who has not received sedation uh, for some condition uh, on a daily basis during radiation therapy and they have uh, not noted any significant differences in either cognitive development or regarding any uh, aspects of the child's uh, development. And therefore, I think it is reasonably safe for us to uh, give pediatric sedation on a daily basis on a short term, for a short term, uh, for a short period, uh, both in terms of uh, immediate and long term future of the child. So it is absolutely safe to administer pediatric anesthesia. Our experience also mirrors uh, whatever I have just spoken. Uh, we have also seen that uh, once the treatment is completed, um, children have relatively normal development. Um, obviously, depending on which site of uh, body receives radiation therapy, the effects would vary. But I see that the pediatric sedation per se has not contributed any, uh, anything uh, detrimental to the child's development. Hello, I'm Dr. Indumati, consultant anesthesiologist working in Apollo Proton Cancer Center. I'm a trained pediatric anesthesiologist. I take care of children coming for proton therapy. Proton therapy works in two stages. One is the planning phase of it, which is the initial phase where we do the imaging, the MRI, the CT, and then the immobilization device is made. By immobilization, we mean a mask that is made that so that keeps the part that is irradiated immobile in case of brain it's a face mask and in case of a body or any part that needs to be irradiated the, there is a mold that is made according to the child's shape and size then coming to the treatment per se it includes uh, 30 to 40 maximum of 40 40 days of uh, treatment uh, consecutively five days a week leaving saturday and sunday so those are the uh, phases of proton so proton therapy requires uh, the child to be perfectly immobile perfectly still when the treatment is happening otherwise proton cannot happen so children like more than five years are usually able to cooperate with little amount of coaxing and making them understand with the presence of the parent we are able to do that but children less than five years are not able to do so so they need anesthesia care initially or for the entire treatment most of the day, times it's the, for the full course of treatment. Anesthesia of proton therapy is unique in many ways. First is the age of the children. It's usually less than three years and the physiology is very delicate and uh, immature. So we need to consider that. And uh, most of these children, they come in the category of ASA3 or the high risk category because they've already undergone a major surgery which will be usually a neurosurgery or a laparotomy or any other surgery which involves surgical removal of the tumor so they are in the immediate post-operative stage which has a lot of physiological implications second is most of them have had chemotherapy so the the their body will have the effects of chemotherapy uh, and which which we as we all know affects many systems and it has a lot of bearing on anesthesia thirdly uh, these children might be undergoing chemotherapy during radiation so it can be a concurrent chemotherapy. So radiation, when combined with chemotherapy, will have its own side effects. So we need to monitor them very closely. So these are the uniqueness of uh, anesthesia for proton. We at Apollo Proton Cancer Center believe in delivering um, the highest quality of care in whatever we do. And we have created a dedicated pediatric proton anesthesia unit, um, which will take care of these children alone. So we have a dedicated uh, radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, pediatrician, in-house pediatrician who is part of the team, um, an anesthetist, trained uh, pediatric nurses, anesthesia technician, support staff who are trained to take care and deal with children and their family. So what happens when we have a trained uh, team is that uh, the children and the parents are exposed to the same faces, the same people day in and day out for the whole course of treatment they become very comfortable the dosing of anesthesia is reduced and many of the cases we are able to convert them into non-sedation patients that is they are able to cooperate without anesthesia we at APCC we have very high standards of quality of care and we have serial checks and surveys of the same right from receiving the patient um, to documentation to the intra-procedural medications that are administered, to the emergency crash card and uh, monitoring and uh, post-procedure monitoring and 
and uh, documentation, everything is as per the standards of quality of care.